Radiant Child, the story of young artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, Javaka Steptoe. Somewhere in Brooklyn, between hearts that thump, double dutch and hopscotch, and salty mouths that slurp sweet ice, a little boy dreams of being a famous artist. In his house, you can tell a serious artist dwells as he sits at a table with pencils scattered everywhere. Jean-Michel draws from morning until night with a serious face amid a storm of papers. He refuses to sleep until he has created a masterpiece. At night, images enchant Jean-Michel's mind, and he wakes from his dreams to add one more line. His drawings are not neat or clean, nor does he color inside the lines. They are sloppy, ugly, and sometimes weird, but somehow still beautiful. His art comes from his mother, Matilda, a Puerto Rican woman who designs and sews, cooks and cleans, and makes the house look like a stylish magazine. But most important, she lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel on his father's old work papers. From her, he learns that art is not only in the poetry books she reads to him or in the theaters and museums they visit. Art is the street games of little children, in our style and the words that we speak. It is how the messy patchwork of the city creates new meaning for ordinary things. While visiting the museum, they look at his favorite works of art. Reading the story behind each artist, reading the story behind each work, this is how Jean-Michel learns what it means to be a famous artist. Back at home, he creates art on the floor as his father, Gerard, plays jazz records. Mama Matilda cooks arroz con pollo and calls Jean-Michel mi amor. The energy and life of the city can be felt in each line of his drawings. As time goes by, Jean-Michel learns that art has a healing power. After a car accident, he is scared and confused. Matilda gives him a book to calm his fears. It is filled with pictures of bones, skulls, and other body parts. Jean-Michel draws from it until he knows it all by heart. He is no longer afraid. Back at home, Jean-Michel's body heals, but his heart breaks. His mother's mind is not well, and the family breaks. She no longer lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel, but sits by the window, singing only to birds. Jean-Michel is confused and filled with a terrible blues when Matilda can no longer live at home. He tries drawing the terrible out of his blues, but things are not the same. As Jean-Michel grows older, he visits his mother when he can, always bringing his artwork to show, telling her that one day it will be in a museum when I am a famous artist. A teenager now, Jean-Michel decides, Papa, I will be very, very famous one day. With a sly look, a twinkle in his eye, Jean-Michel leaves Brooklyn for New York City, the Lower East Side, a concrete jungle where only the tough survive. During the day, dressed in a green jumpsuit splattered with paint, Jean-Michel stays with friends sleeping on couches and floors, leaving a barrage of collages and poem-filled papers everywhere he goes. At night, Jean-Michel spray-paints the walls downtown with poems and drawings that catch the eye of artists, gallery-goers, and passers-by. Under his art, he signs the name Samo instead of Jean-Michel. Everybody wants to know who Samo is. 
Samo moves from street corners to art gallery walls with powerful color, composition, and line, collaging and painting on anything he can find. His art is still not neat or clean, and definitely not inside the lines, but somehow still beautiful. With his magical charm, Jean-Michel draws a crowd. But when it's time to work, he prefers to be alone with the radio and TV on full blast. Now, in expensive suits splattered with paint, he flips through stacks of magazines into open books and paints into the night and sometimes for days at a time while sounds and images jump into his head. Jean-Michel... An artist among artists never doubts one line, creating from a soundtrack that is all his own. People describe him as radiant, wild, a genius child. But in his heart, he is king, so he draws crowns for himself and others he admires. A grown man now, with the art world in his hands, Jean-Michel still visits his mother when he can. And at his most important shows, above all the critics, fans, and artists he admires, the place of honor is his mother's, a queen on a throne. He is now a famous artist. More about Jean-Michel Basquiat. Jean-Michel Basquiat was born on December 22, 1960, and grew up in Brooklyn, New York. His father was from Haiti, and his mother's family was from Puerto Rico. Living in a trilingual household, Jean-Michel spoke French, Spanish, and English. While his father had some artistic skill, it was Jean-Michel's mother, Matilda, who drew with him and took him to museums. He particularly liked seeing the painting called Guernica by Pablo Picasso in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. It now hangs in the Museo Reina Sofia in Madrid, Spain. Some people think that Guernica shows the suffering of people and animals when the most famous when the warplanes bombed the village of Guernica, Spain during the Spanish Civil War. It is one of the most famous anti-war paintings ever created, a form of activism through art, and a piece that shows the power of an artist's voice which may have inspired young Jean-Michel. When he was about seven years old, Jean-Michel was hit by a car and badly injured. His mother gave him a copy of Gray's Anatomy, which is a medical textbook, perhaps to help him understand what was happening inside his body as he recovered. This medical textbook became an important influence in his later work. That same year, Matilda began suffering from mental health issues and eventually left the family home a difficult loss of an important daily role model for Jean-Michel. As he grew older, though, he visited his mother and showed her his artwork, which helped maintain their relationship. At age 17, Jean-Michel moved away from home. He sold postcards and T-shirts of his own designs to support himself, and he used whatever he could find as a canvas. His first recognized work was a graffiti series created with his friend Al Diaz starting in 1977, tagged with the name Samo. The traditional art world was looking for something new, modern, and connected to street culture, and Basquiat arrived at the perfect time. His first public exhibition was in the Times Square show in 1980, and his first solo show was in Italy in 1981, the year he sold his first painting which would be followed by many others. He also met and became friends with other famous artists of the time period, like Andy Warhol and Keith Haring. Basquiat lived an exhilarating life, but underneath the excitement of his success, he struggled with a drug addiction until his death on August 12, 1988, when he was only 27 years old. His paintings now sell for millions of dollars and are collected and displayed in museums all over the world, such as the Whitney Museum of American Art and the Brooklyn Museum. Motifs and Symbolism in Basquiat's Work Basquiat was known for his charisma, 
energy, and bold, captivating art. His work was often political and expressive, with a strong point of view and message, which is why letters, words, and phrases sometimes appear in his pieces. He addressed topics such as the struggles of everyday people and their fight against capitalism, colonialism, and those with power. His work also spoke from black culture, including influences from African and African diaspora art, religion, history, and folklore, improvisational jazz, bebop, hip-hop, sports, and the melting pot culture of New York City. Like many artists, Basquiat used motifs, recurring subjects, right? Those are those designs, pictures, patterns that we see artists use over and over and over again in different works of art. For Basquiat, crowns represented many things, such as power or strength. And he often gave crowns to others in his artwork as a sign of respect. Eyes often represented remembering, seeing, or understanding the past or the present. Cars, trucks, and airplanes often symbolized Basquiat, Basquiat's childhood and the car accident that badly injured him. Somewhere in Brooklyn, a little boy dreams of being a famous artist, not knowing that one day he will make himself a king.